Welcome to the country of Mimosa. We are here in the Tanneron, which is near the French Riviera, to talk about this amazing, one of my favorite actually, plant, the Mimosa. So the Latin name of this species is Acacia dialbata. Um, and it is from the family of the legumes, also known as the family of Fabacia, where you find your classical peas, beans, but also wisteria. So it's a really big family. And why are we talking about this special plant? Is because we usually talk about plants in their native environment, but as you can see here, the mimosa is really feeling at home here. The mimosa is actually a native from southeastern Australia and it was brought to the French Riviera by English people who had fancy gardens but the issue is that it escaped very quickly and now it colonized most of Western Europe, especially Portugal and the Côte d'Azur where we are now in red and as you can see it was also grown as an ornamental crops to sell flower bouquets so it is still actually grown for that purpose in the region. As you can see with this red cross, this is what a mature mimosa tree is looking like. So quite tall, quite big, but actually mimosa only lives up to an average of 40 years old, which is really a short time as a tree time. is that this is the soil where it's growing now and as you can see it's really barren we have a bit of layer of organic matter but um, it's really appreciating a very poor dry and acidic soil which means that if this was a different place where the soil conditions are different the mimosa wouldn't have been appreciating so much to colonize everything so that's why it is so specific to this area of the French Riviera where the soil have those conditions and um, second thing as well is that we have those other native plants which are characteristic of an acidic soil growing here like this Lavendula stoechas which is characteristic of dry acidic soils as well as those cystus but as you can see the mimosa is definitely having some competition We actually wanted to come back on the type of soil because as you can see here, the mimosa has been spreading on almost no soil, just pure rock. So if you have a garden where it's really hard to grow something and you have a lot of heat and dryness, then the mimosa might be a really good choice to start creating some biomass. But take a grafted variety which will be very less likely to spread and invade your garden. This is probably the last step of our Mimosa tour. What we want to share here is that think well about where you're gonna plant your Mimosa, what height you want it to be because Mimosa react really badly to being cut. And if you cut your Mimosa, it's gonna look like this. It's not gonna recover well. So it's really important to think about what you're doing. And if you ever have to cut it, cut it really close to the trunk so you don't have this effect. Here it's a very specific case because this is actually a mimosa farm where it's har harvested for their flowers to be sold but you don't want this in your garden. <laughs> Ting, what do you think of your first time in mimosa land? Um, it's stunning. It feels like so much lightness and like a, such a bright color cover all the mountain but also I feel it's kind of scary like a, I never saw a plant will be like so uh, much uh, produced in the one area that you can see like miles and miles of uh, mimosa and it's like everywhere